Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at application preferences. We're going to look at how to create an application bundle and how to modify it. So to begin with, I'm just going to create a new project using a single view application. So I'm going to click Next and just give it a name, call it Preferences Demo. The only thing I'm going to have checked off is automatic reference counting. And next, I'm going to save it to my desktop and click Create. Now before we get into application preferences, let me show you what we're talking about. So in the simulator, if you just even open up the simulator and you go to the first screen, we have the settings icon, which is the standard way to go in and modify some of the settings for your applications and your device. So if I go to the settings option, you can see that this is where applications can store settings and the user can come in here and make modifications. So if I were to go into Twitter, I could go in and customize it with my username and password and then sign in. And we have similar settings for Safari, which is an application for browsing the web, and then Photos. So in your application, if you add application preferences, once we do that, it's going to automatically show up over here in the Settings application. So I wanted to show you what this looks like now and then what it's going to look like after we add our application preferences. So to do that, I'm going to come over and I'm going to go to File and New, File, from the menu, and I'm going to choose Resource under the iOS option. And I'm going to create a Settings Bundle. And you can see here it's a bundle for specifying an application's settings. So that's exactly what we want. I'm going to click Next, and we're going to keep the name Settings.Bundle going to add it to our project files and click create. And then you can see here we have our settings bundle and it created a folder here. We have root strings and root plist. Now the root plist is an XML file and I can expand this down and you can see some of the information of how it's structured and we'll go into more detail with these in a minute but it's a dictionary of objects, of keys and values. And I have a separate video that looks just at plist structure. So if you want to get into more detail about that, you can watch that. But this video is also going to go into more detail about how these apply specifically to application preferences. These end up being translated into the preference entries that you see in the settings application. And this is an XML file, as I said, if I right click on it and choose Open as Source Code, you can see the structure in XML format of how it's set up. And then to get back out of this, you can right click Open as Property List. And then the Strings file, this is good for localized content, so if you were doing this in another language, you would be able to use the strings file for localized information. But let's just see, since we've added our settings bundle, I'm going to run the application in the simulator, and you can see it's completely blank, and we haven't set anything up in this project yet. But what I want to show is if I click on the Home button and then go to the Settings application, click on here, you can see that now we have a new entry in the settings application for the preferences demo. And the settings that come up are the default ones that we get when we created the settings bundle. So we have a thing here for name, um, a toggle for on and off, and then we also have a little slider. So just by virtue of the fact of creating a settings bundle. It automatically creates and generates the settings in the settings app. Now by default, the way this is set up is the user would have to come in here and make modifications and changes in this settings. 
but we can also apply them programmatically through your application so that if the user changes something in the application it will update in the settings and if the user changes some settings in here it will update back in the application so you don't want to have to require your users to go out to settings in order to make changes to the way their application should work so we'll do a demonstration on that and I'm going to do that as a separate video because um, this one might get too lengthy. So first of all, let's just deconstruct how this ends up looking like this from the settings bundle that we have. And this is really generated from the root plist. So I'm going to go back to the plist and I'm going to bring up a screenshot that kind of helps to associate what these items are doing here and what that ends up looking like in the application settings. Okay, now each preference is represented by an item known as a preference specifier. And so I have the, the names of the preference specifiers listed next to what our application settings actually look like. So you can see here we have a group item and there's a group specifier. Then we have a text field for name and then there is a toggle switch showing enabled and then we have a slider. So we have the PS group specifier for preference specifier. So the PS is preference specifier group specifier. So we can name these different groups of items. So what we have in our P list here actually equates to what is displayed in the preference settings in the settings application. Now if I switch back into my root P list here and if I right click and I choose show raw keys and values, you can see that this is displaying the information. Let me bring up that slide again. We have the PS group specifier so we can see how it's listed here. A lot of developers thought this was too confusing to use these this type of naming convention and so if you've used Xcode in previous versions this might be the naming convention that you're used to. But if I change this back to turn off the raw keys and values we have a little bit more user-friendly naming convention listed in here. So let's customize this. I'm going, to, I'm going to remove each of these items and we'll start our own list from scratch. So I can select an item and I can cut it by right-clicking on it. I can also uh, select it and then press delete on the keyboard. So either one, and I'm going to delete all of these elements. And now to add some things back in, I'm going to start with a group identifier. So I'm going to right click and choose add row. And this type is going to be a group. And then I'm going to expand this triangle and we can see that we have a type and a title in here. And our type is going to be a PS group specifier. And when I press enter, it's going to change it to just group. Now I could just type in group if you know what that's called. And then the title of this, I'm just going to say uh, my sample app settings. So I'm just going to run this again in the simulator and we'll look at those settings so that we can see what this looks like as it begins to build. Now again when I run this there isn't anything in our view controller yet so I'm going to hit the home button and then we're going to go back over to the settings and here's the settings for our app demo and so here we have just our our group name so we haven't added any of the other interactive types of settings so we really have just added a title here so let's come back in and add more so I'm just going to minimize item 0 I'm going to right click and choose add row and now the default that it's giving me is text field which is in this case exactly what I want uh, going to come over here and expand it gave us the setting types for working with a text field so my title in here is what I want the user to be able to see and I'm just going to say um, username 
And I'm going to add an identifier in here. And this is sort of like a key. This is part of the key value. So my identifier, I'm going to say user name. I'm going to add another row in here. So we'll add another row. And we could specify a default value to appear in the text field. So let's say I wanted to have something in there that just says username. So that's something that they will see. And again, I'm going to add another list in here. So we'll add another row. Text field is secure. We'll look at that when we do the next one, which will be for password. Uh, let's look at auto capitalization style. And we can say no auto capitalization. We don't want it to automatically capitalize anything as it goes. I'm going to add another row. And we have auto correction style. And again, uh, we don't want it to auto-correct, especially when we get to usernames. It's always trying to auto-correct my username or my name for something. So I'm going to leave that turned off, but there may be cases where you do want it to have the auto-correction turned on. So again, I'm going to run this in the simulator, and let's see what this looks like. Okay, so I've just gone right into the preferences. So we have our group name, and then here is our text field and you can see where these come into play where we have the title the title here the default value showing in here so the user could tap in here and type in and put in their own username it doesn't automatically do the auto capitalization and it obviously doesn't try to do any auto correction so let's add another item in here I'm going to collapse this and again right click and add row and this one is a text field but this type is going to be for passwords so I'm going to expand this it's a text field let's say the title is password we're going to make our identifier password and we'll add some more options under here let's say text field is secure and I'm going to change this to yes Again, I'm going to build this and run it, and we'll see how our password looks. Okay, so now we have our password in here, and you can see as I start to type, it hides the password information. And we'll do one more type. I'm going to add another row, and instead of a text field, this is going to be a multi-value. So we're gonna have a select list. So by choosing multi-value, my title in this example is going to be display distance. And we're gonna have the option in here for yards and miles and kilometers. So my identifier is gonna be distance. And I'm gonna say my default value is going to be in miles. Now with that set up, I just wanna show you what this looks like. It's not complete yet, but let's just see what this part is doing so far. Okay, it's not adding anything on here yet. So we still need to set up what, since we have a multi-value display, it's going to be a select list of things. So we have to continue adding on what those things are. So under default value, I'm going to add another row and these are going to be for values. So we're gonna create an array or a list of things to put into our dropdown list. So now I'm going to expand that and add a row under there. So this is going to be my first thing. So I'm going to say uh, miles and we'll add another one for feet and we'll add another one for kilometers. So that's for values and we also need to have titles. So I'm going to add another row and it pops up with titles here which is just what we want. So then I'm going to expand this listing and just like I did with values I'm going to add a row and I'm going to do the same thing with the values that I had here so the values are what we're actually going to be using and the titles are what the user will see in selecting things so I'm just going to use the same thing okay so now let's test this and see what our preferences looks like now so here we have display distance in and then we have miles or feet or kilometers so if I say kilometers and we go back then we see our selected option in here 
Okay, so that's a basic overview of adding different preference items and how they work to display in your application. And let's do a separate video, because this is getting a little long, on how to actually set up your application so that if we make a change in here, we can reflect these changes back in our app. Right, because if we have an app that is going to get some one of these values, maybe we want it to use feet or miles in our calculation. So we want it to be able to grab information from the setting here. Or if the user changes a setting in the application, to have that reflected back here in our settings. So we'll do a separate video on how to connect this back to your app so that they can talk to each other.